good as it's gonna get. I took a shower, washed my hair, threw on a little bit of makeup. I have a dress on with no compression um, because I'm gonna stand up in a bit and show you what I'm looking like without any garment on. Um, so as I said, week two post of tummy tuck, full tummy tuck with muscle repair as well as Brazilian butt lift round two with a revision kind of, but it's definitely around two because he added more to the top of my butt and as well as to my hips. So I will show you guys, I already showed you guys with the Faja, I'll stand up when I'm done chatting with you guys. Um, I wrote down a little bit of notes just to kind of keep myself in some type of an order. As I said, there's good days and bad days. Today is one of the days where I didn't feel like doing anything and I took like a four hour nap which was amazing and I woke up feeling a lot better. I'm still very swollen, but I feel a lot better, refreshed. I was able to take a shower by myself, wash my hair by myself, and do my makeup. Um, so this is two days past the two week mark. All right, so first thing I wanna say is that my drains are officially out. I only have one drain, my drain is gone. My aunt took it out for me. I will be sharing it in a separate video. Maybe I'll put in a little clip here, I don't know. Um, but I will be sharing in a separate video removing my drains at home. It wasn't like a super formal video, but my aunt just like did the damn thing. She has been my hero throughout this whole process. The way that I knew that my drains were ready to be removed was that for two days back to back, the fluid collection was only at 25 milliliters, which is what my doctor told me is a sign that is a which is what which is what my doctor told me is a sign that I'm ready to remove the drains. That morning too, the second day, when I woke up, there was so much leakage all over my faja and it was coming from the drain. So it just felt like my body was rejecting the drain at that point. And at that point, I was over the drain. That little bitch was moving all around and irritating my skin. And it was just so uncomfortable to shower with her. Like I had my techniques and my methods. But I wanted that thing out so bad. So that morning we woke up, we knew it was time and we did our little research and we removed it by ourselves at home. It was completely painless. I built so much hype up in my head just by getting like the heebie-jeebies and getting grossed out with the idea of the drain. But the actual removal was completely painless. But you do feel it moving through your skin because the drain was on this side of my body. But it came through my entire stomach. So... As she pulled it, even though she did it fast, I felt like a major worm just crawled through my skin and my belly. So that part was a little bit gross, but again, it was completely painless. Once it was out, I was so freaking happy because I can put on my garment freely, I can use the bathroom freely, and I can wear clothes more freely without worrying about that thing hiding. Because wearing the drain in public is honestly a little bit embarrassing. Flying home with it was embarrassing because people are looking and they know you did something, and then it's building flu up in that drain, so seeing it is just disgusting. So I took it out on Sunday, which was a little bit, a couple of days before my two week post-op period. But as I said, when it hit 25 milliliters, 24 hours, it twice in a row, then I knew it was ready to be taken out. Now I have been going to massages here back at home. I did massages when I was in Florida and I'm gonna probably share that in like a whole experience vlog. Maybe again, I'll put clips here I'm not sure how I'm gonna work it But the massages in Florida were absolutely disgusting because There was so much fluid build up in the back not necessarily in the stomach because I had the drains But in the back they would literally open one of my cuts where the light bulb was done do the massage and then like squeeze the massage outward and like my fluid would be running down my legs and my back and like pouring out of my back like a waterfall of blood and fluid and it was just disgusting and the idea was disgusting the pain was like really really painful i would always take my pain medicine one hour before the massage but it was absolutely disgusting the massages here are more comfortable and painful um, but there's no actual like leakage. They're not opening my incisions here. I am doing lymphatic massages, but they also do like ultrasound therapy and UV light therapy, which I didn't even know was a thing. Um, so it's been really cool getting the massages here. My last massage, there was build, build up in my back. So she actually put a few syringes in my back to drain the fluid. And it was, um, painless like I didn't feel the syringes even going in I guess because it's so swollen and the fluid is so built up 
But um, yeah, there was definitely fluid built up and I do have one area in my back where I have like major fibrosis. I'm not worried because every massage that I get, they work that area a lot. The massages are critical to breaking down that fibrosis, but um, it is definitely more pre like more um, prominent on one side of my back where you can see like the hard build up but it's definitely a lot better with each massage that I go to and they just really work that area and try to break that area down so my doctor definitely did some aggressive lipo on my back and I think it was more aggressive on one side than the other which is why I have the fibrosis on one side of my back which is completely normal and like I said you need those massages to work out any areas that you do have fibrosis you don't want to just sit there and just let it go or just solely rely on your compression garments you need to go get massages afterwards and the post-op care is definitely a huge part of what your final results are going to look like so your doctor my doctor's in florida he's not here to tell me what to do i don't have my recovery assistant here telling me what to do so you have to do your research and take it upon yourself to find out the importance of the massages and book these massages at this point my belly button is looking good i think in a couple of days i will start using my belly button shaper right now it's still a little scabby so i don't want to do that and i have not used the sil silicone scar sheets because they're still scab areas and i need the scar to be completely like healed before i can start using sil sil silicone scar sheets or mederma or things of that nature so i kind of just been washing it and leaving it alone and letting it heal and letting the scabs just fall off naturally on their own but two weeks post-op, it is healing really, really nicely, and I'm really, really happy with the scar and with my belly button. I was really concerned in the beginning that my belly button was going to be a little bit crooked, but it is slowly coming back to the center as the swelling shifts, and my body is just constantly changing every single day. So that is exciting. I will say my coochie hair has started to grow around the scar. Um, which is just weird. I get really grossed out really easily um, and that's just one of the things that gross it out, gross me out, but it's completely fine. It's completely normal and it looks fine. It doesn't hurt. Um, so that's not really a problem at all. There's one area in the scar that because of the faja and when I sit down, it does get the most like friction. So the scab just keeps coming off that area, which is kind of good. It looks healthy. If anything, it's kind of forcing that area to heal faster, in my opinion. In terms of how I feel, there's extreme tightness. Like your abs are literally sewn back together. Like when you have a baby and you get diastasis recti, your abs, instead of being lined up together, they kind of go like that and they have a gap in the middle. So with the abdominoplasty, it sews that gap back together. And of course, you're going to feel extreme, extreme tightness. So there's moments where I feel like I have a little difficulty breathing, which is normal. The more time that passes, the less I feel that. But I do get winded a lot easier. And I don't feel like I can stand up straight just because of how tight my stomach feels. So I don't want to force it at all. Um, but it's just extreme tightness. Like everything is being pulled towards your abdominal muscles so coughing is extremely painful so if i can avoid coughing at all times i avoid it i do my best to fight the urge to cough um if i really really do have to and i can't avoid it i crawl into like a baby i crawl up like a baby i put a pillow in my stomach and i try to cough like either fast so i can get it out at one point or just a bunch of soft coughs. It a bunch of soft coughs. It depends on what I'm feeling in that moment. Sneezes. I've avoided sneezes at all costs. So I know it would be painful because just the like position starts to hurt, and then I fight it and it goes away. Um, but laughing is is getting a little bit easier. Um, bending is getting a little bit easier. It's just a lot of tightness both in my stomach and in my back because of the swelling so that's the area that obviously that's like the most uncomfortable but there's a lot of areas around my belly button and around the scar itself where i just can't feel anything the only reason i know i'm touching that area is because my fingers can feel but like the actual sensation on my skin there doesn't it's just not there because there's obviously a lot of nerves were cut in the process of the surgery those things will slowly come back within the year 
um, I expected that and I had a c-section so I kind of knew that feeling but I would definitely say this is worse than a c-section for sure because a c-section they just sew you back up they don't do the muscle repair the muscle repair is definitely intense sleeping wise I cannot wait to just go in the bed and knock out and sleep on my stomach again and sleep on my sides but I won't be able to do that for probably another my sides probably like another month because they did put fat in my my hips so I don't want to you know compromise that fat um i want to make sure that it survives because i really like how my hips are looking there's a thunderstorm happening um i won't sleep on my stomach until i'm fully comfortable with the scar being healed and with being completely flat so sleeping i'm gonna still continue sleeping in this recliner or in my bbl canoe but i will say at points it gets annoying and you just miss your bed and you're tired of constantly being at an angle and you just want to sleep in your like true comfortable position and you can't so sometimes my neck is hurting because like i don't know what to do with my neck and it's just like it's tiring like i don't think i sleep like a full full night i have not slept a full full night yet i also don't because my daughter is missing me and she wants to sleep in the bed with me um we have our setup so she's always nearby me but it's not the same so she wakes up a lot throughout the night and wakes me up so sometimes i'm in my most comfortable sleep and then she wakes me up so sleeping is rough but it's not impossible it's not the worst thing like it's definitely bearable i just miss my bed as of right now, I don't take any more pain meds. Um, so day two, I was... Wow. Um, day two, I was completely without any pain meds because on day one, they prescribed me oxycodone and the oxycodone broke me out. My lips blew up. My eyes were swollen. I'm definitely allergic to something in pain medicine. I think it's the naproxen. I think it's the acetaminophen. I'm not sure. I don't have an official diagnosis. I've been to the ENT. They've never given me an official diagnosis, but I know for a fact that Aleve, Motrin, Oxy, anything that is um, like a, a pain reliever usually blows me up and makes me uh, have a hive like breakout. I do have suffer from chronic hives, so it's just part of my life now. Tremadol actually has done its thing and it's has a steroid in it so it doesn't make me break out anything that does have a steroid in it is going to be safer for me in terms of like breakouts but once my body stopped needing to take the pain medicine as much i find that if i do take it just to get a little bit of relief i get nauseous i get bad headaches and my body just reject rejects it so i try to avoid it completely the only time that i will be taking it is prior to my massages because those little bitches are painful okay um yesterday i drove for the first time which was a little bit uncomfortable definitely doable a little bit of the bumps that new york city just has on the roads hurt um i did use my bbl pillow i didn't get my back support pillow which i think would have helped me in terms of comfort but um driving was okay it's just the bumps that hurt but my driving ability was fine because i'm again i'm not on any pain medicine um training was fine like everything else was fine it was just kind of getting used to the idea of driving again um, and just kind of feeling that I'm on a pillow and I'm not like on the actual driver's seat So I have to get a little bit used to that, but it was definitely okay I went to Target I went grocery shopping and when I got home I was very sore and then I didn't wear my compression because I was washing it and That's why I woke up so swollen this morning. So definitely compression is super super important You're not supposed to have compression off for more than three hours in a day and I did more than three hours yesterday and I slept without it so definitely do not do that because you will wake up super super swollen and it's just not worth it so um i have to get another faja the one that i bought in miami although it's a 3x which is the same size as what i'm wearing right now it can't get past my hips i don't know if i just broke in the one that i have right now but my body is not in a position where i can break this one in um, so I'm going to be ordering some more fajas because I can't just solely rely on one. Plus I need like other fajas just for cleanliness and for stages of my transformation. Um, so that's pretty much that for week two in an update. I will show you guys what I'm looking like right now. What I 
I already showed you guys what my butt was looking like. Uh, I will need another small revision. I haven't decided if I am going to go through with it. It will require that I have a scar about that size on my butt, which I think I would be okay with because I will tattoo any scars that I'm trying to hide. But I'm just not sure. I'm going to wait for the swelling to really go down and see what my, bu my butt looks like after that because it's... So my memory card died. Um, let me just show you guys what I'm looking like right now. My memory card died. Um, so, yeah, so my butt does need a slight revision, but I don't know if I'm going to do it yet. It is thundering outside, so I'm going to bring this video to an end. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys what I'm looking like without any compression. Whoa! My cats are about to start going crazy. Um, so as you can see, I really, really like... Let me try to stand against a lighter background i really really like the hourglass figure type thing that we got going on i'm super happy with that my waist is just going to keep getting smaller as i get less and less swollen because i'm definitely swollen right now um and my butt is going to go a little bit more down but i'm still happy with it right now and my back is super swollen and i can't stand up straight so if this is what it looks like in this position I can just picture the final outcome. So I'm super, super happy with my results and with, with the doctor and everything in general. Um, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about in today's video. I am going to put my faja back on right now and keep laying down because today I really just wanted to focus on taking it easy. If there's anything that I left out or any specific questions or vlogs that you want me to make, please definitely leave it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and just, yeah, stay tuned for the next video and show your girls some much needed love. Alright, bye guys!